Karen. Courtside Karen, we needed you. We've had sports without fans for most of a year now, and now you've arrived. Courtside, screaming at the greatest basketball player in the world like he's a waiter who served you Chardonnay that was room temperature instead of chilled like you specifically asked for. Go off, courtside Karen. Go off. No, at the end of the day, that's, uh, I'm happy fans are back in the building. I miss that interaction. I need that interaction. We as players need that interaction. I don't feel like it was warranted to be kicked out. See, see, LeBron missed this stuff too. Sitting at home, watching on TV. All of us love to see athletes mixing it up with fans. As long as you don't get too excessive. It's entertainment, y'all. The players love it too. They miss it too. As long as fans say where they belong and don't do anything too physical. Physical at all, actually. Getting heckled is actually part of the game in the NBA. No other major sport has fans so close to the action. But that element of the NBA has been missing for quite some time now. Until last night. Until courtside Cameron. Let's not kick courtside Cameron out of games, y'all. Let's send her two games to every arena. At least until we get arenas full again. Let's have courtside Cameron. Game of the night. The NBA needs her. America needs her. Pretty much try to clean it, clean up, uh, you know, the things we did last year. Um, you know, we all know, you know, how we lost, why we lost uh, that game, um, those games. And, uh, but, you know, it's not a thought of just trying to get better right now. I'm um, trying to be a better team this year. Um, not worrying about what happened um, last year. The game of the night tonight in the NBA, without question, is the Clippers versus the Nets. The Brooklyn Nets, my pick to win the East and the Los Angeles Clippers owner of the best record in the NBA and the new number one in ESPN's NBA power rankings. The Clippers have been playing great basketball, y'all. Winners of 10 of their, last, of their last 11, and they roughed up my New York Knicks pretty good Sunday night, I must admit. I get all that, and guess what? I don't give a damn. I don't care about the Clippers having a good regular season. That means nothing to me. They did that last year. And then they let us down, blowing a 3-1 lead in the second round of the playoffs to the Denver Nuggets. So the Clippers can be ranked the top whatever NBA rankings you want. That includes ESPN rankings, by the way. My rankings are different. The fact of the matter is, however, they still owe us a conference finals matchup with LeBron and the Los Angeles Lakers. The power rankings in Los Angeles are still Lakers 1, Clippers 2. Why? Because LeBron did his part last year. That's why he showed up. But the Clippers were well, the Clippers. Up 3-1, lost to the Denver Nuggets. Nowhere to be found by the time the conference finals rolled around. You sure you ain't worried about the Clippers? Clippers with Kawhi Leonard. And <laughs> Paul you sure you're not worried about the Clippers? Boy. <laughs> Nobody worry about the zippers, man. Laker to a Clipper, man, I can't be faded. Come on, man, the Clip. We talking about the Clippers. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> Did you see that? Snoop actually said more. I didn't even play the roughest part of that clip. Look, nobody is going to take the Clippers as a serious threat to the Lakers until they actually do something. It's all talk until that. Kawhi Leonard, with all that fanfare, and the commercials, and the king crying the crown dangling from your mirror last year about taking over LA. Remember that? We're still waiting, bro. Get to the conference finals. Go up against LeBron and the Lakers. Then. But to the pros we go. LeBron and the Lakers picked up a win over the Hawks last night in Atlanta, but it was a courtside interaction that made news when a fan who was heckling LeBron along with three others were booted. Here's the king on what went down. I'm having fans are back in the building. I miss that interaction. I need that interaction. We as players need that interaction. I don't feel like it was warranted to be kicked out. Um, there was a, 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 you know, a back and forth between two grown men. And then when someone else jumped into it and, and, and said their piece, um, and it kind of got blown out of proportion. Stephen A., do you think uh, the fans should have been ejected from the arena? 
Based on what uh, what we saw on video and what LeBron James said, no, I don't believe that. I think that in this day and age, particularly with the what, what the world is going through, and specifically here in America in the sports world, um, to see fans heckling players and stuff like that is actually welcomed. To be honest with you, now there are limits. Uh, Russell Westbrook and various others can speak to that because some things that are said are completely and utterly uncalled for. In my years of covering the NBA, I've seen many occasions where fans definitely crossed the line with some of their language and some of the things that they said. But other times when they're heckling you and bothering you, um, I, 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 don't, I don't think that it warrants ejection. I think going over to them and telling them to watch their language is about as far as it needs to go because in most instances they know how to heckle you or, uh, while minding their manners in terms of their language. And I think that they're definitely capable. I'll give you a, a personal experience, Max and Molly. I was at um, the Rams-Kansas City games. Remember that Monday night game years ago when Kansas City lost to L.A. 54-51, to that epic mm -hmm. Monday night football mm -hmm. game? Well, I'm in the suite for ESPN L.A. radio. And fans were screaming at me and stuff like that. And one of the guys was getting out of control and he was heckling me. And security went over to remove him. And I told security, no, leave him alone. It's okay. And I looked at the guy and I just said, just watch your language. Just watch your language and you're good. And he actually thanked me for it. He still heckled me, but he heckled me in, in PC fashion, not rated R. And as a result, we all ended up having fun. I was, you know, I was messing with them. They were messing with me. And it's all in fun. And I think that's the kind of thing that LeBron is alluding to when he talks about how the fans shouldn't have been ejected. She seemed a bit acerbic when she jumped into the fray, whoever that person was with the gentleman she, uh, LeBron was arguing with. But I appreciate what LeBron is saying. You kind of miss that, and you want to see that because the fans are an integral part of what makes the game special. And watching these games without them in attendance, even though I really appreciate the players playing and playing with the fervor that they're playing with, I really do miss the fans there. So I appreciate where LeBron came from on this, and I agree with his assessment. Yeah, first, let me say, LeBron can get down in the mud and, and wrestle and come out clean. Like, the way he handled this was just right. First of all, his tweet, courtside Karen was yep. mad, mad, all caps, is hilarious. And, and even the fact that he said she shouldn't have been ejected, he likes the interaction, the fact that he's going back and forth with them, it's all good. The only, and she should not have been ejected, based on what I understand, except I have to say this. When you talk loud and a lot, that's how you spread COVID, right? Like, that's what you like, because it's really expectorate. It's the particles coming out of your mouth. I know it sounds disgusting or funny or whatever, but that's what the mask really does. The mask is not there to protect you. Your mask is there to protect me. My mask is there to protect you. And it looks like we're in the home stretch of this thing. The vaccine is coming out, but it's going to take some time. You don't want the thing to mutate. There's still high mortality or, or like people dying because there aren't enough hospital beds, stuff like that. So we still need to be careful. And if the mask is off her face and she's yelling, I don't know, Stephen A., if she was warned to put her mask back on and she didn't. But if she's yelling with her mask down, then I could see that being the basis of her removal. That has not been reported that they told her, hey, put your mask back on and they didn't. But that's one way I could see, okay, I get it. 